Hi everyone, welcome back. Another pencil and wash sketch for you today. I'm just wetting the sky area with clean water and now I'm using a mix of yellow ochre um, just for a bit of atmosphere around the bottom part of the sky there. Now I'm using cobalt blue and just letting it run into the yellow ochre and over the distant hills um, just to give a bit of atmosphere in the distance there. And once that's dry, um, I go in with a, a light mix of yellow ochre uh, on the distant hills there. Um, and while it's still wet, I use a mix of hooker's green and cobalt blue um, just to drop into the wet paint so it diffuses nicely and gives a nice soft effect. tidying up along that bottom edge there and then I let that dry um, I'm using the same mix again um, just a little bit of yellow oak and I'm dropping a little bit of hooker's green and cobalt blue just over the, the trees in the distance there and that's just uh, yellow ochre um, with that exact same mix again. Um, it's just the same three colours, yellow ochre, hooker's green and cobalt blue. Um, just sort of dropped in, wet into wet. Trying to keep everything nice and soft in the, in the background. It's a great thing about watercolour, that wet into wet technique looks absolutely lovely. Um, you know, particularly for backgrounds, it gives a really nice soft effect. Just dropping in a little bit of cobalt blue just to um, create a little bit more distance there. It's ended up a little bit too dark actually, so when it dried, I used a um, damp brush and just took a little bit of the paint off just to soften it down a little bit and lighten it up a little bit. So once that had all dried, I, um, I went in with another wash of yellow ochre, um, a little bit stronger this time, as I come more forward into the picture. Uh, but I'm doing exactly the same thing with exactly the same mix of um, cobalt blue and hooker's green, just dropping it in while it's um, still wet. And I mixed it a little bit stronger as well because it's coming further forward into the picture and I made it a little bit greener as well. What I'm trying to achieve with this um, sketch is a, a sense of cloud shadows moving across the land. Um, and I want to really sort of emphasise that around the house uh, where the, with the trees are and everything. Um, so I'm, I'm using the yellow ochre to sort of emphasise the sunlight on the fields. And the cobalt blue and the hooker's green is to sort of suggest the shaded areas. first part of this painting, um, just like the blocking in stage at the minute, it's, it's just done with those three colours. Um, it's the same uh, all the way. I just use yellow ochre as an initial um, undercoat and then I just use the cobalt blue and the hooker's green in various um, strengths and mixes. Sometimes I'm using a little bit more um, cobalt blue, sometimes I'm using a little bit more hooker's green in the mix. Um, but it's just three colours. I'm trying to go for a sense of unity as well um, and not have anything, you know, stand out. I want sort of a nice colour harmony here because I want to really emphasise the cloud shadows um, later on in the painting.
those trees just there at the back of that hill um, I'm just going over those with um, Hopper's Green and Cobalt Blue but just a little bit more Cobalt Blue um, just to distance them off a little bit and I'm just dropping a little bit of yellow ochre in which is probably a bad idea um, but they are actually in shade there so um, I don't really want them too green or too sunlit so on the bluer side would have been better really Now as I'm working forward um, in the picture, I'm strengthening the yellow ochre up even more um, to emphasise uh, more sunlight in the foreground. You probably recognise this scene, it's quite a famous scene actually, it's, it's somewhere in Tuscany. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed painting this actually, it's, it's a really nice scene to paint. Just making um, some of the areas darker there that are going to be in shade. Um, particularly down uh, that side of the hill there, although I'm putting yellow ochre there, it's like I say, it's to give sort of a colour harmony and unison throughout the painting, but it's going to be um, glazed over several times with um, cobalt blue and hooker's green. Um, trying to keep it on the bluer side as well, just to suggest a bit more shade. I'm carefully painting around those. Uh, well, I'm not sure what they are. I think, uh, possibly grape vines or something, I'm not too sure. We'll call them grape vines because I don't really know what else they are. But just carefully painting around those because the the ones that kind of stick up above that field there, they're going to be sunlit um, and the bottom part of them is going to be glazed over with blue eventually um, to suggest you know the cloud shadows going over. Just using the same yellow ochre again, you can see it's a fairly strong mix now. Um, just a touch in, in between those grape vines, just on that far edge there. And just dragging it down just a little bit um, into the field. And then she'll be going over it with a mix of um, cobalt blue and hopper's green. I know I keep repeating myself and saying those three colours over again, but um, you know it is as simple as that. That's all I used. <clears throat> Obviously, I'll use a few more colours later on in the painting to do the house um, and the trees. But just for this initial stage, just to get this sort of underpainting going, it's just three basic colours that I used. I must admit I struggled with these grape vines. I've never actually painted um, anything like that before, I don't think. Um, yeah, they're, they're quite quite tricky to do. I think I probably actually overworked it actually towards the end. Um, but it doesn't matter, you know, it's only just a little pencil and wash sketch, so I'm just, just having fun today. Trying to follow the lines there with the hooker's green and cobalt blue mix, um, just to suggest the you know the lines in the field. It kind of diffused into the yellow ochre a little bit, but I'm still uh, the brush marks are still following those lines. It 
same principle with this foreground field. Um, you know, it's a wash of yellow ochre and a mix of cobalt blue and hooker's green um, along the base there. I still kind of flick up with the brush in the direction that the lines are going, um, just to give the effect that you know, there's sort of shadows and things like that in the grass that follow those lines in the field. So that's sort of like the first wash done. Um, now I'm going over sort of glazing everything and strengthening everything up. Um, I think I probably made this wash a little bit too blue actually. So I do actually go over it again later on um, with a little bit more green. But in the picture that I'm copying it's, it's completely in shadow just there so um, it wants to be fairly dark. And the same um, in between those trees there at the side of the house. It's quite dark there. So I'm, I'm using a mix of um, Hooker's Green and Cobalt Blue again. But it's, it's just quite strong this time. And that area there I'm painting it exactly the same way as I did initially. I put some yellow ochre across the top edge of the hill. And Hooker's Green and Cobalt Blue. Um, as it comes down towards the base of the hill. And also there's um, graphite underneath there, um, suggesting some of the shaded area anyway, so uh, that should help a little bit. Okay, so now that's dry. I'm going in with quite a strong mix now of, of yellow ochre. To really sort of emphasise the, the sun in that area, and obviously now these are the sort of cloud shadows going in. Um, the sun's coming in from the right-hand side, so it's sort of catching the hills, uh, you know, in different ways. And plus the cloud shadows going over, it gets sort of quite patchy. The the light and the shade in this picture. But the, the picture I copied, it, it looked really nice, you know, it, it gave a really nice sort of sunlit effect and that's what I'm uh, trying to achieve really. And I'm just glazing over in between the, the grapevines there, a little bit more yellow ochre and then um, while it's still wet, just dropping in some hooker's green and cobalt blue again, where the, the shade's going to be. is to put the focal point right in the centre of the painting. Um, but, you know, the picture that I'm copying from um, was exactly like that. I thought it was, it was quite pleasing, so I thought I'd do the same. Um, I could have used a bit of artistic licence and moved it over to one side and down a little bit, but I thought, no, I'll, I'll leave it like that. I don't have to follow the rules all the time. You know, I can, I can put the focal point in the middle if I want to. Um, I thought it, you know, it was quite, quite pleasing to the eye to have it there actually, so I just went with it. Now I'm using yellow ochre again to strengthen up this foreground field. I'm really getting some darks in there now with the hooker's green and the cobalt blue. Probably looks um, a little bit patchy at the minute. Um, but when it dries out, I shall go over it again with a glaze um, of yellow ochre and hooker's green. Just sort of put everything together. Yeah, it's ended up looking a little bit patchy because um, the yellow ochre um, dried too quickly. 
Well, actually, the truth be known, I work too slowly. That's uh, more like what happened there. But you can see I'm glazing over it now with a bit more um, hooker's green and yellow ochre mixed together. Um, just sort of darken it off a little bit because I want to sort of keep that in shade to emphasise that middle area um, just in front of the house there. I'm just sort of fiddling around with those trees in the distance there, just trying to make those look a little bit better as well. Just using a little bit more cobalt blue and hooker's green. And now for these trees, I'm using um, a first mix of hooker's green and cadmium red. So I've got a nice dark green, a warm sort of dark green. Um, and then while it's still wet, I'm using neat lemon yellow um, along the sunlit side and just letting it uh, run into the dark area. Lemon yellow can work a treat for this sort of thing, for dropping into dark greens while they're still wet. Um, it gives a lovely sort of sunlit effect on the trees. Probably not so noticeable on these because I'm going over um, graphite, but um, in normal watercolour it looks really effective. So I'm going quite dark with these trees. Um, you know, I want the eye to be drawn to that area, so I'm keeping them nice and dark. Um, so I've got a nice strong contrast just there. You know, they stand out nicely against the background. using a number two brush for that as well so I can uh, get the fine detail in. Somebody actually asked me if I'd make a video um, showing you know my watercolour uh, equipment and what, what supplies I use and everything so I'm going to make that next I'm going to do a watercolour supplies video um, yeah so I hope you like that one <laughs> now I'm using that same mix for these um, little bushes in the foreground of um, hooker's green and cadmium red but I'm not bothering to, to put any um, lemon yellow on them because they're sort of in shade same with those two little trees um, just on the side of that hill there it's just the same mix of um, hooker's green and cadmium red and the same mix again for the distant um, trees and bushes um, but this time I just used a little bit well I probably weakened the wash by half actually I used a lot more water in there um, but used the same colour um, but I didn't want it quite so strong in the distance. So, like I say, I added a fair amount of water to the, to the mix. Now, the, the bit that I was worried about the most, these grapevines, um, I felt the self-doubt setting in as I was drawing them, actually. Um, and now as I'm painting them, I'm beginning to regret um, drawing them in. But... Anyway, I'm committed to it now, so I went for it. I just put some yellow ochre in there 
and dropped in some of his green and cobalt blue and just hoped for the best. Um, and just started fiddling around with it, which you shouldn't really do. Um, but I did. And <laughs> it didn't look too brilliant, but um, I decided to sort of dab it off with the, with the tissue and sort of start again. Just try and keep it a little bit simpler. You know, you see, I, I just keep going in and going in, hoping for the best, but nothing's sort of happening there, so. There we go, in with the tissue. <laughs> and now I just sort of keep it simple, I just give it a, a wash of yellow ochre um, down the left hand side, and a wash of um, cobalt blue and hookers green on the right hand side um, towards the bottom edge there. Still not looking brilliant, but I really didn't have a clue how to paint these um, to actually make them look like grapevines in a field. Um, and they look like caterpillars or something at the minute, don't they? <laughs> um, but I thought I might be able to sort of make it work when I glazed over it with some cobalt blue um, to put them in shade a little bit more. So to sort of draw the eye away from it a little bit. See, the whole idea of, of just using these three colours for virtually the entire painting um, was to add emphasis to the house and the dark trees because the house will have a red roof on it and yellow ochre walls and one side will be in shade. Um, so that red roof and the dark trees um, will be the only kind of different characteristics in the painting. So I think your eye will be naturally drawn to that. Um, so it should, you know, make a nice uh, focal point. As you can see, I'm still struggling with those great vines. I'm just trying this and trying that and dropping paint in and just hoping for the best. Um, and they don't look, they don't look too bad, but. Um, I should have planned it out a little bit better actually. Probably had a little practice on some scrap paper first of what I was going to do there. Um, but me being me, I just you know dived straight in and, and went for it. Just using um, hooker's green and yellow ochre, um, just on that hedgerow there. Added um, a little bit of hooker's green and cobalt blue, um, just on the shadow sides. Just a darker mix of it. And that hedgerow there, that's the, the dark green mix of hooker's green and cadmium red.
still messing around with those grapevines. Um, I shouldn't have done that at all really, but there we go. Right, for these trees, um, well that one in particular was very sunlit, so I just used um, a little bit of yellow ochre. Uh, sorry, yes it was a little yellow ochre with a little bit of lemon yellow mixed in there. Um, with some hooker's green and cobalt blue to drop in for some shadows. And the rest of the trees, um, I'm using a mix of yellow ochre and hooker's green and I'm dropping lemon yellow right in on the sunlit edge as the um, paint is still wet um, to give a nice sort of sunlit effect. And just here and there I'm varying the washes as well. So although I'm using hooker's green and yellow ochre. Sometimes I put a little touch of um, cobalt blue in there, um, particularly around the base of the tree, just to you know suggest a little bit more shade or something. And you'll also notice as well um, that I paint one tree and I miss a tree out, and then I paint another tree. I don't paint two trees that um, are touching each other because the washes are just going to run into each other. So I leave a gap between, and then go back and fill it in when the trees either side are dry. So it's the same three colours <coughs> that I used all the, all the way along there, just with lemon yellow dropped in on the edge while it was still wet. But just vary the colours slightly so it doesn't all look too much the same. I think that's kind of gave you the idea of um, how I've done those trees. So I just painted the rest in um, off camera just to save time. Now I'm painting in the road. I'm using um, cobalt blue and cadmium red. A very light wash. Um, sort of made it into sort of a purple mix. Um, it's not on the red side or the blue side. It's quite you know neutral. Um, balance between the two, but just keep it very light, um, just, a, just a simple light wash over that. And now for the bit I've been waiting to paint all, all through this picture, the house. Just a wash of yellow ochre um, on the walls, a light wash, and when it's dry, I, I used just meat, um, and what was it I used? Burnt sienna uh, for the roof. Just carefully painting in between the trees. done that I let that dry and I used the same colour that I used for the road which is um, cobalt blue and cadmium red but I just strengthened it up a little bit um, and I used that just to go over the shaded side of the roof um, just under the eaves of the roof and on the shaded side of the house there and there we go that's the finished painting hope you like that thanks very much for viewing and I'll see you next time Bye for now.